Today, I wanna to talk about rendering versus hand drawing. I don't want to necessarily say which is better, but I definitely have a favorite between the two, and I'd love to hear what you think at the end of this video. I feel like I have a pretty unique perspective on this subject because having practiced both as a 3D artist and a freehand illustrator, I have experience from both ends in my own work and working with clients. So in this video, I wanna share my thoughts on the difference between the two kinds of representation and prompt you to think about how you might wanna use it in your own career. The three areas that we'll be covering are speed, cost, and effectiveness. Let's start with speed. When I'm working on a 3D rendering with a client, typically a project like this will require three to five scenes. Having done many of these in my career, a typical render from start to finish can take anywhere between 15 to 20 hours. This typically involves prepping the model from the client, rendering it out with V-Ray, from time to post process the render and time to revise feedback. I also wanna clarify in what I do as a 3D artist as there is a nuanced difference between just rendering and visualization. I think a competent rendering in my opinion can be technically produced, meaning the lighting, the materials, and the space are accurately depicted, but often lacks the mood and atmosphere. On the other hand, my role as a 3D artist is to add in the artistry to the render in a phase called post-production, where I inject the mood, the people, the vegetations, and various entourage into a compelling composition. So when you look at it, there is a sense of uh, emotional engagement to the narrative. This is the art side of visualization not many people realize, and it often takes more than half of the time in a render. A project can be very intense because it usually entails a short time frame under a deadline. Just imagine a job with five renderings can take upwards of 100 hours. And if you're doing it all on your own, like I did for about two years out of school, in addition to having a full-time job, you can imagine for the two weeks that I'm working with a client, I'm just having the time of my life. Given I actually care about having a life outside of architecture, I decided not to pursue this freelancing route on the site, even though the money was far better than what I was making as an architecture designer. And also I didn't go to eight years of architecture school, so I become a 3D artist. But then again, I also didn't think I would be doing YouTube either. Anyways, let's contrast that with hand illustration, which I do much more nowadays. With this route, the amount of work that I do with a client is instantly shaved by half, if not more. For example, I no longer need to spend time to prep the model for the render, which often takes more than half the time. Now I can just take the client's model in wireframe mode and that's all I need on most days. It doesn't matter if it's from SketchUp, Rhino, or Revit, it's all the same because I'm just using it as a backdrop to build my composition on top. As a result of this time saving, this allows me to be in a creative mode much faster because I only need to focus on the storytelling part of the narrative and not needing to worry about the technical stuff that comes with the rendering, which doesn't really interest me in the first place. I just had to do it. So for a drawing like this, it takes about five to seven hours of my time to produce, which is about a third of the time compared to a rendering. In addition, hand drawing is also a lot more forgiving if you're working with undercooked design or concept that just doesn't have enough content. So uh, making shit up is another service I offer to my clients and I'm not kidding. Because I've experienced working in both large and small scale building sectors, plus a good intuition on design in general, this is really easy for me to exercise my creative judgment to make things that are under design believable. This actually is a really enjoyable part for me because I feel like I'm playing a master architect just briefly who is handing out this grand design vision. And all this can be done very quickly on a 2D surface where I'm just drawing in perspective than having to construct a 3D model and making a render out of it. When I'm working with a client on illustrations, I build my time on an hourly basis. So for a rendering, that could be as high as $3,000 and I wish everyone had deep pockets so I get to work on all sorts of projects, but at $150 an hour, there could be significant saving for someone to choose over 3D rendering for a hand drawing style if it serves the same purpose to communicate something. When you are the owner of a firm or a student in school, you also have to consider another variable, which is the cost of time, also known as the opportunity cost to do something else if you didn't spend that time rendering. 
And when I was in school, the visualization part of my projects was actually my favorite. And sometimes I felt like my design and other content suffered a little because I chose to spend this time visualizing my project instead. My projects are always the attention grabber in studio because of the attractive visuals, but other part of my board are not as developed as I would like to. So in school, you have to choose your battles. Unless you choose not to sleep, you might be able to do it all, which just wasn't like a consideration for me. And if you are outsourcing this part of representation to someone else, you generally have to pay pretty good money for good results. The old idiom, you pay for what you get is very true. Someone else might be a lot cheaper if you hire them outside of the US, but you know, is your time really worth spending writing tons of emails back and forth, trying to explain something to someone who is not a native English speaker? On the other hand, if you choose to do everything yourself or in-house, also expect to pay a lot of money for good equipment and software licensing, which will need to be upgraded over time and requires maintenance too. So I guess what I'm saying is, it doesn't matter how you do it, but if at the end of the day, if you are providing rendering as part of your basic service, it is going to cost a lot of money or your time. And if you are starting out on your own, I don't think this is an area worth spending a lot of time and effort in. This leads me to the next point, which is how effective is rendering versus hand drawing? I've worked in the custom residential sector in the past four years in San Francisco, and I can say in confidence that 3D rendering don't really matter all that much in the type of work that I do, which is mostly single family housing. I wanna say this will fly for other kind of building types as well, given its review by the same group of people at city planning who should uphold the same standards for all applications. In fact, on projects where we submitted realistic renderings to the city, it was more hassle where we were nitpicked far more for designs um, compared to times where we submitted hand style kind of drawings. And we weren't sure at the time whether this hand style kind of illustrations were acceptable to the city, but it turned out they accepted just fine. I mean, think about it. What did people use 20 years ago when rendering wasn't the expectation or the norm? Honestly, I think people react harsher to the realistic kind of representation. Maybe it scares them because they can almost see it there right in context, and it's just a lot of building to absorb than something that's a little bit softer and less concrete like a hand style rendering. And maybe your jurisdiction doesn't allow you to submit this kind of drawing style, but I can't imagine it's a requirement to submit photo realistic rend renderings to the city. I've also had clients who came back to me from design meetings from their clients and told me all the positive feedback that they've gotten during the presentation because they showed something that was out of the ordinary compared to other contenders who showed the exact same kind of renderings. I think this made them stand out even more. Frankly, I think 3D renderings are a little overused nowadays and it's lost a bit of its magic since its inception when it was the new kit on the block. And even the first year architecture students in school can like whip up nice renderings. So it's no longer this novel thing that only expensive computers and elite few can produce. On the other hand, how often do you see a beautifully crafted hand drawing? It doesn't have to be fully hand drawn. It could be a hybrid drawing combining uh, with a rendering like this one I did for a competition entry. LTO Architects in New York is just amazing at this kind of hybrid style of drawing where they overlay their handwork over a digital rendering. So it's quite unique when you see one, and I think this kind of throws people off from the usual representation, and it puts a smile to their face. I'll leave a link below to a book called Intensity by LTO. It's full of their drawings in detail. Also, in my own experience as an architecture designer, I've never had a client who insisted on seeing a realistic 3D rendering of the design alone, as opposed to a hand drawing like this one that provided just as much information and told the story in a fraction of the time. And if someone wants to see a photorealistic render, it probably means they don't trust my design enough to imagine it. Lastly, as I mentioned before, by not needing the time to render or have someone else do it, you can better invest your time in doing something else. 
So in conclusion, I hope it's clear to you now why I pivoted away from the realistic rendering into the world of hand illustration. It's not only quicker, cheaper, and potentially more effective, but I think it's just more fun for me to get back to my drawing roots. I grew up drawing and painting all my life, and I think that's the reason why I went into architecture in the first place, and I felt rendering for a long time was an uh, extension of my drawing and painting background, uh, but I know now from working in the industry that there is a special place for hand drawing still, and I think it's going to be my tool of choice from now on. And while renderings are nice to have, it's not a necessity for me to depend on anymore for storytelling. And this is really just my perspective. I think there is definitely a place for beautiful renderings that are work of art. Vast majority of it is just crap. I really admire the works of MIR or Mir uh, in, in Norway. I think they are true artists in, the, in this industry and really have a lot of respect for what they do. And if I had to choose a second career outside of architecture, that would be someone that I would want to work for, especially in a place like Norway. I hope you enjoy and got something out of this video. I'll see you next time.